I've been getting my fair share of comments on this little guy right here, and I'll tell you, this little handle gives you great feedback on smaller taps. This is at 256, so you can see just about how big that is. Size-wise, oh, it's about two and a quarter inches long. It is 375 diameter stock, which is about just under 10 millimeters, I guess, maybe nine and a half millimeter diameter. Let's knock one out real quick, show you how easy it is to make one of these. You will be glad you did. I'll start with that. 17-4 stainless I'm making mine out of. You can make yours out of whatever you want to make it out of. Let's do it. Start off by facing both sides and putting a nice chamfer on both ends. And the material about an inch and a quarter. My next operation, the compound is set at five degrees. I am going to touch the tool off on the face of the part, move in one inch 060, and zero out the digital. At this point, I'm going to make contact with the tool and look for a 200 root diameter, maybe 240. Let's say 240. It's 375 stock. I need 135 total depth of cut. Contact. Let's do one inch. One inch. One hundred and thirty total depth of cut. diameter you decide to cut your piece to, make sure that this root diameter right here is bigger than the screw that you will use to secure the tap. This is a transition point. We're going to drill it out and this is going to be very thin if you go too deep. I'm using a number 10 screw. This should be about 240. 
let's put a small chamfer on that section that's closest to the collet. Flip this piece around, do exactly the same thing to the other side. That's hot. Yes, it is. Okay, the handle is shaping up. This is the current state of the part. No holes in the end. Whatever screw you decide to use, I'm using a number 10, like I said, I am going to tap drill this to this side of the elevated boss. So whatever this length turns out to be right here, go that far with your tap. Drill. And I'm going to go with a body drill so that there's no threads until about right there. And I'm going to counterbore it. Well, this will make sense in a little bit. Tap drill to this side. Clearance drill out to about 6-7 millimeters beyond here. And then counterbore it for the head of the screw. Let's do it. Tap drill first. Once you pass your tap drill through your part beyond center, grab a drill the size of the screw that you're going to use, a little bit bigger. So this is a clearance drill here. I'm going to stay about 10 millimeters away from that undercut face, about 10 millimeters back. On this piece, it's about 600 long. Do it. 600. Put the tap on there, tap it just about to center, maybe a little bit beyond. Next step in the process is to put the center features in. It's only a hole. There is no fancy mechanism going on here. Just strictly a hole. Line the entire thing up by eye. 250 pin in the chuck. Go through. Forget you're drilling across a center hole here, so be careful.
cross hole is about ten thousandths of an inch bigger than the biggest tap you think you're going to use. I'm putting a 149 hole in here, that should be fine all the way up to probably a number five or number six. Let's pop it on the bench, clean it up, take a look. I like that jaw in there, huh? I love that thing, it works like a charm. Alright, this is the final product. It is a 150 through hole to accommodate up to a number 5 tap. Make sure when you do this, this is completely by eye. It's very symmetrical, but this is completely by eye for me. This one takes a number 10 screw. And the screw is just about long enough to reach halfway through the hole, because chances are you're never going to use a tap smaller than half that hole. Counterboard on the end to accept the head of the screw. Do not let this neck diameter get smaller than the screw, or it will snap off. Let's see when you put it in. I like to use a big screw, that way you have a nice driver for it. It's a number five tap. If you're tapping a material and you're afraid you're going to snap the tap off, when you torque down on this, torque down on it very gently. That way if the tap binds, the handle spins on the body of the tap. It's a little bit added safety. Stick it up here if you want, but I found out that if you put the spring-loaded center on there, sometimes there is not enough protrusion. You can thin it out, you can do whatever you want. This is a tool that you made and something you're going to have and use for a really long time. On taps that you want a little bit more effort, put a little flat on it. Take it over the grinding wheel and just bump it on the edge of the grinding wheel. And that's the flat that you register the screw into. Then it's not going to slip. Prep on the tip of the screw is no big deal. Put a nice 45 degree cone on the front of your screw. That way when you do smash down on your tap, you don't damage the thread. You only flatten out the point. Keep an eye on that point as you continue to use this. And I think that you're going to get a lot of years of uh, happy, happy use out of this guy. That's the second one I made. This is the first one that everybody's been seeing me use. That's got a little bit bigger through hole. This is for a little bit smaller taps. There you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you make one. Hope you use it. And I hope it makes your life easier. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay well. Joe Pye at Advanced Innovations. I'm out.